So we've talked about the moons of Jupiter from outermost to innermost. And so uh, we talked about Callisto, Ganymede, um, and then Europa. So they're getting more interesting as we go in. Uh, so uh, let's see what's, what is Europa. Uh, what's in word from that? That would be the moon Eo. Now, I actually learned to pronounce this Io, uh, uh, but really it's pronounced Eo. Uh, so uh, I, I try to say, say it the correct way, but every now and then I slip. But when I first was learning astronomy, it was mispronounced uh, uh, in school. And so that's, that's, I actually learned it the wrong way. But it should be pronounced Eo. When they first saw Eo, when the Voyagers sent back pictures, they looked at it and said, that doesn't look like a moon at all. It looks more like a pizza that got run over in the, in the road. Um, it was all the wrong colors. It was yellows and oranges and browns. And um, it had splotches all over the place. Um, it did not seem to have the sort of features they expected. Just weird. In size, Eo is just a smidge bigger than our moon, so it's roughly our moon size. Um, it's got several features on it that seem to stay the same, but other features change, and that was the thing. Voyager 1 flew by, and Voyager 2 flew by not that much later, and yet it looked entirely different. There were only a few things that were the same. Everything else had, like, rearranged and moved, or not removed, but changed color and size and shape and, and so forth. And so this was, this was a big uh, confusion for them. Part of the reason that it kept changing, though, and they saw actually no impact craters at all, was after the Voyager had already gone by, then a, a graduate student was looking at a picture. Uh, uh, remember, the Voyager took a whole bunch of pictures and then it flew on past. And so after it was already gone, they were looking at a picture and they noticed that there was like a little bump on the edge of the picture. Zooming in on it, there's this sort of thing like that. Uh, and there's more of them here and more of them right here, another one right here, just all over the place. What is that? Well, that turns out to be a volcanic plume. So those are volcanic plumes right there. And they realized that all these volcanic plumes were constantly spewing stuff out into the surface. That made the surface very young because it's constantly being surfaced. Now, let's just look at these pictures right here. Uh, only a handful of spacecraft have been past EO, and they've taken some pictures. And, you know, just the very first spacecraft going by took a few snapshots of EO, um, not realizing it would be all that interesting to look at in depth, and caught one of these volcanic plumes. Now, the question is, how many of you in the class here have actually seen a volcano erupting. And I don't mean on TV. I mean actually seen a volcano erupting. Okay. If you were to take a snapshot of Earth, just random, a snapshot of Earth, just randomly at some point in time, in some place, how many volcanoes would you likely see erupting? And the answer is probably none. Volcanoes, yeah, they're pretty common on Earth, but they're not this common that just taking a snapshot and you get several of them erupting in the same field of view. I mean, they're, they're not that common. So that means this is a massively volcanically active body. In fact, there are over 400 active volcanoes on EU. They are so active that this stuff is being spewed outwards at up to 2,200 miles per hour, supersonic velocity, supersonic lava, and spewing up to a height of 300 kilometers. That's almost uh, the, the altitude that the space station orbits Earth, the International Space Station. Uh, and, and that means that if you look at it, uh, uh, and then you look at it again later, uh, just, you know, months later that the surface completely changes there. And um, the colors you see are from the burnt and heated sulfur. Each of these volcanoes is spewing outwards up to 100,000 tons of material every second. 
That's unbelievably volcanically active. I mean, yeah, Earth has active volcanoes, nothing like that. I mean, we don't have any volcanoes that have ever been that active. So what's going on here? This is a small world. It's hot. Small world should not be that hot. Well, it's a mystery as to how it got that hot on Europa, too. Because remember, Europa is warm enough that the volcanic activity keeps the ice molten. Shouldn't be doing that. Well, the key is the way these moons orbit around Jupiter right here, that as they orbit around Jupiter, they sometimes all line up, and then they sometimes are like perpendicular to each other. Now, if they all line up, what happens is that stretches the moon one way, and when they're perpendicular, it relaxes the stretching and, and, and allows it to get more around, and then it stretches along again. This constant stretching and flexing can make the surface go up and down by up to 100 meters over the course of just two days. And so, uh, you know, that's, that's like the size of a football field within zone uh, in just a couple of days going up and down. So this flexing generates heat. The tidal stresses produce 10 to the 13 watts. So that is going to be 10 trillion watts or 10 terawatts of power. That's an unbelievable amount of energy right there. That's billions of kilowatts. So this, this is like unbelievable how much energy it is. Um, so uh, the other thing that happens is the, the huge magnetic field of Jupiter makes an electrical current that runs through here, and that like acts like uh, that acts like uh, a giant electrical heater producing 1,000 gigawatts of power. So once again, we have this unbelievable amount of electrical heating going on added to the tidal heating. That's more than enough heat to completely melt the interior. That molten interior, it's what's producing all that lava because it is constantly kept molten by this flexing. Okay. Well, the other interesting thing that was discovered was that in the orbit of Io, and so here, here's a graphic that shows in yellow here the orbit of Io, but if you b blot out the light of Jupiter here, you can see there's a very faint torus or ring of plasma orbiting. All that stuff being spewed outward actually is, in some cases, achieving escape velocity, leaving EO, going into orbit around Jupiter, making this giant plasma torus. It's, it's electrically charged, you know, with static electricity, you can think of it as being spewed out like that. Well, that plasma torus, being electrical in nature, is going to interact with Jupiter's magnetic field. And it's going to produce an electrical voltage of about 400 kilovolts between Jupiter and Io. That 400 kilovolts is going to act on electrical, electric particle, electrically charged particles and make those particles flow between Jupiter and Io. So you have positive flow one way, negative flow the other way, and so you get about 5 million amps of electricity flowing between Jupiter and Io all the time. That actually produces a giant radio beacon. So as Io goes around, it actually produces this beacon sweeping out across the solar system. Uh, so um, this is actually one of the ra loudest radio sources in the solar system. So it's like a, a lighthouse, you know, beaming off into space. I mean, in, in science fiction, you know, they talk about aliens detecting our signals from space and coming to investigate. They're more likely to actually detect this lighthouse beacon coming from EO rather than the radio signals or TV signals coming from Earth. Once they come investigate, they might find our signals.